Hi. This video is about a topic which is uh, feared by many students of physiology. The reason being that it involves a lot of conceptual understanding. The equilibrium potential and uh, there have been some questions in the past in various entrance exams related to this topic. For instance, equilibrium potential for which ion is closest to the RMP of a muscle and the options are uh, sodium, potassium, calcium chloride. So RMP of a muscle is about uh, minus 90 millivolts and equilibrium potential for which ion will be closest to the RMP of muscle, skeletal muscle. And then uh, equilibrium potential for which ion is closest to the RMP of a nerve, sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride. Again same four options, this time the answer is different. RMP of a nerve is minus 70 millivolts. So, here the answer is different. The first one, the answer was chloride. The second one is uh, also chloride, but technically speaking, it could be potassium. Why I am saying this? We will discuss all of this in the, in the video. Uh, so, questions that students uh, ask generally. For instance, uh, why the equilibrium potentials are different in the case of a nerve? and different in the case of a skeletal muscle or why we give plus sign or minus sign for a particular equilibrium potential for a particular ion. When do we choose plus or minus sign? For instance, equilibrium potential for a sodium for sodium is plus 61 millivolts, but for potassium it is minus 96 millivolt. So what decides this plus or minus sign? These are the questions which are asked by the students and therefore Let's try to understand this topic in detail, starting with the concept of equilibrium. Uh, you know, very often I have seen students having a wrong concept of equilibrium. Very often students, they think equal means equilibrium. Yes, I have seen many students thinking like that. I'll give you an example. One student when asked what is uh, equilibrium of potassium, his answer was potassium is 145 milliequivalents per liter inside the cell and 4 milliequivalents on the outside. So by concentration gradient, by concentration gradient it will go out, some of the potassium goes out, so 70-70 on both sides and that's equilibrium. That was the concept given by a final year student who has read physiology. So uh, that is why I decided to discuss this topic in great details, starting with the concept of equilibrium itself and then the equilibrium potential. So what is equilibrium? Equilibrium occurs in two adjacent compartments in the context of an ion. For instance, let us take the same example, potassium. Uh, potassium 145 milliequivalents per liter inside the cell and 4 milliequivalents outside the cell in the ECF. So, concentration gradient is driving uh, the potassium out, outward and there is an electrical gradient. In some of the previous videos we have discussed about the electrical gradient means high number of positive charges to low number of positive charges, there is an electrical gradient and a cation will go from high number of positive charges to low number of positive charges. So by electrical gradient, the potassium will move from outside to inside. You know cations by the electrical gradient they move from ECF to ICF because there are high number of charges outside the cell as compared to inside the cell. This is the relative distribution we are talking about. 
and you can see there are two opposite forces the concentration gradient is driving the potassium out and uh, electrical gradient is driving the potassium in at some stage when these two forces are equal when these two forces that are causing the movement of potassium they become equal so equal and opposite forces now they balance out each other means there will be no net movement of potassium now whatever potassium goes out by concentration gradient equal amount will come back by electrical gradient so there will be no net movement of potassium and then we would say potassium has reached equilibrium that's the concept of equilibrium potassium has reached equilibrium means there will be no net movement of potassium there are two equal and opposite forces uh, which are which balance out each other that's uh, the equilibrium let me say at least in the case of few ions like sodium like potassium equilibrium is fairly hypothetical or theoretical i mean generally they do not reach equilibrium and even if they do i'm talking particularly about sodium and potassium because you know we have sodium potassium pump which is always active and which is always moving the sodium and potassium so sodium and potassium generally they do not reach equilibrium and if even if they reach equilibrium it will be very fairly temporary uh, stage it will be disturbed they will keep on moving so this stage coming and staying is uh, fairly hypothetical in that sense on the other hand chloride as long as the cell is resting chloride remains in equilibrium why we will see this so that's first point about the equilibrium another term which is used which is uh, which uh, which uh, basically general physiology uses this term uh, steady state condition steady state condition so what is steady state steady state is uh, for the various parameters of the body that uh, they remain at a particular level for fairly constant uh, they remain fairly constant for certain duration a constant is achieved and reached and th then it stays for quite some time for longer duration that's a steady state condition for example resting membrane potential in the case of nerve muscle they stay in the resting membrane potential as long as uh, they are not stimulated so this is a steady state condition let me just uh, compare these two terms and then we will talk about equilibrium potential let's first compare equilibrium versus steady state let's start with the example so that uh, it will be easier for all of us to compare what is equilibrium potassium by concentration gradient is driven out it moves out diffuses out and by electrical gradient it moves in and when these two forces the concentration gradient and electrical gradient when they are equal there will be no net movement of potassium potassium has reached equilibrium on the other hand what is steady state uh, resting membrane potential membrane rests at minus 70 or minus 90 millivolts for quite some duration only when it is stimulated it will be disturbed this rmp will be disturbed or blood glucose is maintained at uh, let's say 100 mg percent this is a steady state condition so steady state means a constant is achieved it was achieved on the basis of some kind of set point 
and that constant will remain for quite some time. So, the comparative feature equilibrium is fairly short lived. I went to the other extreme and said that in the case of sodium and potassium, equilibrium is fairly hypothetical or theoretical. I mean, it is not reached the equilibrium for sodium and potassium and even if it were to be reached, it does not stay like that. These ions keep on moving all the time. Right. Relatively, uh, compared to the equilibrium, steady state is relatively longer duration. It stays in that state. Equilibrium keeps on getting disturbed all the time. Second, equilibrium is between uh, two adjacent compartments. When we say uh, sodium has reached equilibrium between ICF and ECF or on either side of the membrane, on outside and inside of the membrane. So, we are talking about two adjacent compartments. Uh, steady state, not necessarily so. It may involve one compartment or several compartments. Equilibrium, two equal but opposite forces balance out. That is equilibrium. Steady state, not necessarily so. In the steady state, there can be multiple forces and they are not necessarily equal and opposite. Take the case of uh, blood glucose. To maintain blood glucose at 100 milligram percent, there were multiple forces which were acting and they are not necessarily equal and opposite to each other. Most importantly, uh, equilibrium does not need any ATPs. To attain equilibrium, ATPs are not consumed. Take the case of potassium reaching equilibrium. Uh, it is diffusing by concentration gradient as well as by electrical gradient and diffusion does not need ATPs. However, a steady state condition, achieving and maintaining the steady state condition needs ATPs. So, that is a huge difference between these two uh, terminologies. So, that is uh, the equilibrium, the concept of equilibrium whereby two equal and opposite forces are balancing out and that particular parameter is in equilibrium. It is not moving in a net quantity.